Hey everybody, welcome to Landscape Rescue. My name's Stuart Moore, and today's video I'm very excited about doing for you guys. It's about air layering. Now this is something that I've experimented with, but I've never gone all in and just really grinded it out and figured out the best ways to do stuff. So I've got some air layering that I did yesterday with a different medium. Wanda? which was uh, Back to Nature, uh, their soil amendment. Threw the bags away, so now I don't know what it is. Back to Nature, anyway, it's a, it's a cotton, a composted cotton burr compost, and I used that, and I felt like it was gonna be a little hot. Ain't got no money. You know. For what I was trying to do, but I did it anyway, let's do an experiment. Let me break it down for you. But first, before we do that, I wanted to introduce you guys to Lolly. So Lolly was a little puppy that I was telling you about that I was driving to San Antonio to get. My little sister has gotten really into the whole genetics uh, of designer dogs. Is it a freak of genetics? And she feels like she's created the sea biscuit of designer dogs in Lolly. Lolly is, I think, 10 weeks old. She is the sweetest dog I have ever had. Well, the sweetest puppy anyway. She's 100% puppy. Like, don't get me wrong, she's 10 weeks old and she climbed to the top of the uh, mulch pile with her ball, so I couldn't throw the ball for her. She's a little cantankerous right now because we're outside and we haven't gotten our zoomies out yet. Got a little bit of white on her front chest and then she's got some white on her paws and then she'll have some white on her nose and her chin. <laughs> She's a really, really sweet dog and we're very, very, very lucky to have gotten her because we wouldn't have had, if my little sister wouldn't have given us one of these dogs, we wouldn't have had an opportunity to get uh, such a cool dog like this. Just because of the money side of stuff. I mean, they don't play around. I mean, they do genetic testing, they do all this stuff uh, on the parents to make sure that they're not putting any genetic defects into their puppies. I'm really excited. So this was for Titus's birthday. Unfortunately, Lolly doesn't know that she's Titus's dog. She is very confused that she thinks she's my dog. I saw her um, go after Echinacea, which apparently look just like a ball. Uh, Black Eyed Susans, uh, Black Eyed Susan flowers. She's a fan of those. Uh, Dianthus flowers, especially that pinball wizard. Uh, she really likes that. We're having a good time with Lollipop because she's such a good girl. Yes, you are. You are. <laughs> Air layering, I wanted to talk to you about that. Now all the cuteness is out of the way. We've got it figured out. You guys know who Lolly is. Lollipop is her full name. Lolly Gagger is what I like to call her. Lolly Gagger. Lolly Gaggers. We are actually in the midst of what I can only describe as the dragonfly fertility festival. I'm going to turn you around so you can see this. There is probably a hundred, 75, a hundred dragonflies flying around my yard like that. It has been going on for a couple days. You look behind me in my neighbor's yard, no dragonflies. No dragonflies back here. I mow high. I mow it about five inches, uh, five to six inches. Are you lying to us now? Or were you lying just a minute ago? And I have all these plants and all these flower beds. I think it's, it's just encouraged wildlife. Yeah, I've got two baby bunnies that live on the property that keep eating my clematis. One of the subscribers had mentioned that baby bunnies like clematis. They've eaten both of those ones I bought from work down to the ground. Good times. Hey, get out of there, the echinacea slayer. We're having a good time in the yard and we got some rain, so everybody is super happy. All the bugs are super happy. Let's get into the air layering side of this. I've tried to shoot this video about four times, I think, and I keep screwing it up somehow. That's the struggle. You guys don't see the uh, dumb Stuart struggle that happened, but I like to put it out there on the internet that I'm a moron and I can't somehow figure out how to use a camera. When the last video you were so excited about absolutely crashed and burned. I wanna go through the supplies you're gonna need for air layering. And what air layering actually is, is you're just capitalizing on the mechanisms that plants have in place for survivability. Listen to me. I don't know if you're for real or not, and I don't have time for make-believe, okay? 
and you're gonna see this, I'm not gonna go too far into it right now. I wanna show you what I'm doing. You're taking advantage of those non-specified cells uh, that are gonna put out roots because they haven't been told what they're going to be yet. They're kind of like stem cells. They're unspecified cells that can do any job. The supplies you're gonna need, or not even the supplies, let me put it like this, not even the supplies you're gonna need. These are just supplies that I had around the house that I wanted to do some air layering. Here we go. This is what we're doing with it. I have seen people air layer with toilet paper and regular potting or potting soil, regular topsoil, garden soil, just from their garden. They just reach down, they grab a handful of moist soil and they, and they use it like that. I wanna try the toilet paper method with this because you can get toilet paper pretty cheap. I mean, literally you, you wipe your butt with toilet paper. Why is it so expensive? I don't know. Every time I go to, every time, I buy the more household specified toilet paper, that standard. I'm just like, why are we spending? That's a lot of money for toilet paper. This toilet paper over here is only a dollar for like six rolls. Why aren't we getting that? This is the our nice toilet paper that I just raided. So I wanna use the toilet paper method, but I'm doing something a little bit different. Incorporated some Biopack, about half a tablespoon in a bucket and then I sprinkled a little Dr. Earth in there. I, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I just did it. I have some Clonex. So I'm going to put some cloning gel or rooting gel in the wounds that I'm going to create. I have a little paintbrush here somewhere. I was very prepared to do a video. I don't even have my paintbrush. What am I doing? No one knows grafting knife. So you can use anything, you can use razor blades, you can use, use a lot of different things to do this, uh, but it helps if it's sharp. Uh, it also hurts if it's sharp, we'll put that out there. Uh, many a grafter have cut themselves very, very deeply with grafting knives, they are sharp. We're gonna get to it and I'm gonna show you the site and I'm gonna show you the prep and then I'm going to show you why I think this is such an amazing tool for us as poor plant propagator. I don't have a whole lot of money and I don't have a whole lot of time and this requires a very little time and very little money and you get free plants out of the deal. You just have to wait. Let's do it. I feel like this would be a fun dog activity, but Lolly is eating Maynite salvia twigs right now. So I'm just gonna soak this toilet paper real quick. I don't know, it might work. I'm just gonna let it sit in there for a second. And I did find my paintbrush, it was over by my uh, by my butter container that had my water and bio pack in it. Okay, so if it can give you any tips, sharp knife, site that is relatively easy to get to. Now these are nice thick branches. There's more tissue, but it's, it's just easier to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut, right, through the bark. This doesn't have to be very deep. It just has to be deep enough to get through the bark. Just kind of line it up on the other side. And then I'm gonna do it down here. Now I've got a leaf node here and I've got a leaf node here. And so I'm gonna be close to those areas. And that one got a little off, but you'll see why that's not gonna to matter too much. I make a slice down the center between those two cuts. And then I'm just gonna start peeling this back. Now, I kind of do it like this, where I'm just gonna slide the knife down and stop at my second cut. That seems to work pretty easily for me, right? I'm not trying to get into the wood at all. I'm just, I'm just peeling that cambium layer, the phloem, the bark. I'm just getting all that off, separating it away from the trunk or away from that wood. And see, it'll just peel off if you just can just get it started where I learned all of this from is a YouTuber called Heron Bonsai. Now I'm, and he owns a bonsai shop. And during COVID, the garden center was open, but it was also winter and it was very cold. And so I just kind of sat around and learned new things about plants. And he turned me on to air layering. I really liked the idea of this, and I knew it was gonna be something I was gonna get into. I just didn't know 
you know, when I would be able to do that. And you want to make sure you get all of that bark off all the way around. See, I missed a spot right here and that would have screwed up everything. So just feel around and you don't want any, you want it to feel smooth to be able to move nutrients up and up the trunk. Because if that happens, then the specialized cells are just going to start healing. You want to get far enough away to where no healing takes place. Just rooting. Feels very smooth. Fantastic. I'm a big fan of folding knives so you can put them back in your pocket. I'm going to put the Clonex all over this top. I'm just going to get these leaf nodes here. So we've done that. Now we're going to get a piece of aluminum foil, and this is going to seem crazy because it seemed crazy to me the first time I saw it too. And watch this. This is how nuts this is. Here we go. I'm squeezing out a lot of that moisture. I don't want tons of moisture, but... I'm okay with a little bit. It just needs to stay moist. It seems so crazy, but it's a thing, guys. It is a thing. I'm gonna keep squeezing the toilet paper clean, but I wanted to do a little bit more of a baked potato. Okay, so, and again, I'm just experimenting. Now, I'm not overly bright, so I'm experimenting on the internet. Well, that was stupid. For, and accepting all this public scrutiny that may follow. Take your aluminum foil, and I think this way would probably be okay. And we're just gonna wrap that around. Like this. And I've seen it done a couple different ways. Like I said, my guy is, is it Peter? Peter Chan from Heron Bonsai? That's my boy. So whatever he says, that's what I do. I have deviated a little bit. He uses uh, just regular like sandwich bags, like pla plastic bags, and he ties it up with wire. He doesn't even do any of these extra steps. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it and over engineering it. I've been known to do that. So I am, doing shrink wrap around the but you could probably skip this step if you were using uh, plastic bags or something like that now I feel like I'm doing this a little late you know because we're you know it's August but is it August yet I don't even know what day it is and I've got these like cheap little zip ties that I bought at Walmart for like $3 and there's a hundred in here. So not a huge expense, but you could even forgo this part if you wanted to. These might be a little, nope, barely enough room. And again, I could just be over engineering this, but like I said, I want to get this dialed in. I really want to figure out how air layering we can use that um, as a way to save as much money as possible. The reason air layering works is because we're creating a wound. We're separating that phloem, which is responsible for nutrients and uh, the, just the flow of nutrients throughout the tree. That's what brings it back down. The cambium layer is gonna create more uh, tissue. That's what's responsible for the tissue. So we're basically creating a wound and the tree's mechanisms are going to kick into place for those non-specified cells are going to start producing roots because they're afraid they're going to die. Right? So same reason why everybody gets real excited about skydiving. You think you're going to die, you don't die. That's, that's skydiving. It's a perfectly good airplane. I don't know why you're jumping out of it. Other than, you know, it's badass. 
and this whole baked potato, hopefully, by the end of September, will be completely filled with root. So after a couple, you know, six weeks, I want to come check one of these and see, and we'll do a video on that. And, uh, hey, I'm putting it out there. If it's a failure, it's a failure. But I promise, I'm going to figure out air layering. Leave me some comments if you guys are doing air layering or something to that effect. There's also tip layering. That's pretty easy to do. It, it exists in nature where, you know, you can bury a branch, basically, that's still connected to the tree or the shrub or whatever, and then cover it up, put a pot on it or something like that, hold it down into the soil, cover it up real good, and it will grow roots. You know, the blackberries do that which is just a super easy way to propagate blackberries, uh, but they do propagate rather well through cutting also. The key to remembering is most deciduous stuff you can air layer. If you can do a cutting of it, then you can air layer it. Now we're talking about woody stuff. Woody stuff is gonna be kind of the, the key to this. We see how much, like look how much money I have wrapped up in this. I have, I have one sheet of uh, aluminum foil, a little bit of shrink wrap, some cloning gel, which is just to speed up the process, and some water, and some biopack. I mean, but, you know, I don't even know if that's going to work. That could screw up the whole thing. Okay, so that's air layering. I hope you guys can utilize that and start experimenting. I don't know. Let's try this out. Let's figure it out. We're doing it on the internet, so leaving myself open to some scrutiny. I'm okay with it. Uh, cause I don't think I screwed it up. I guess the only thing that the only real variables, as much as I over engineered this, I think that it's going to stay moist. That's the problem with air layering is if, uh, it dries out. So that balance between too wet and too dry, uh, you want to be right there in the middle. Uh, some people use clear plastic so they can see the roots. That's what Heron Bonsai does, uh, who is my go-to for any of this stuff. If I had one channel that I could only watch on YouTube, it would probably be Heron Bonsai. I, I have to say that, which would suck because I wouldn't be able to watch uh, Outdoor Inspirations. Uh, I, that's a huge, I'm a huge fan. No more Brie Arthur, no more Impatient Gardener or Gardening with Creekside. Like none of those people would I be able to watch again. But as long as I had Heron Bonsai, I would be okay with it. Such a soothing channel. So my challenge to every single subscriber that I have, if you watch these videos about with me in my backyard or you just are here for the clearance, subscribe to his channel, watch some of his content. There is so much there to digest. He's an absolute genius and a savage. Like you watch him with some plants, you're like, I don't even know how this is even, but he's been doing it so long. He's so connected to what he's doing, he can, you know, like his air layering technique, like there's no like cut across the top and a cut across the bottom and a strip down the middle. There's none of that. I mean, he just goes in there with a pocket knife, starts carving pieces, pieces away from the tree. No wonder it takes me so long to do it. You know, uh, Peter Chan's over there, just, you know, samurai warrior in this bark off this tree. Uh, and he's got a huge, an enormous air layer that he does with just a regular Acer palmatum that's like 30 feet tall. And he has to take off a 10 foot branch via air layering. And I followed up with that video and it lived. The potential for this, for you guys, is huge. So my challenge is to go watch some of his videos and subscribe uh, to that channel because it is worth it. You will not be disappointed in that guy. He's so smart. And if you are disappointed, it's not him, it's you. All right, everybody. My name is Stuart Moore. I really enjoyed making this video for you guys the five times that I tried to do it. Thank you for letting me into your home to talk about plants.